first to China, where coronavirus cases have surged after the country scrapped its zero COVID policy and lifted quarantine and border restrictions. There are estimates an incredible 900 million people, that's more than 60% of the population, were infected with COVID this week. A Peking University study says in one province, 91% of residents have the virus. It is spreading rapidly among a population with little exposure to COVID and where most haven't had the latest vaccines. And with the Lunar New Year holiday starting next week, there are fears it'll hit rural areas hard. ITV News has seen hospitals already packed with COVID cases, hundreds of people queuing outside funeral homes and body bags piled up. A warning that this special report from our Asia correspondent Debbie Edward has pictures of the body bags. It was a chaotic scene as we entered the emergency ward at this Shanghai hospital. There were beds and people taking up every available space. Most of the patients lay still, hooked up to drips or oxygen tanks, their desperate relatives by their sides. This is the fallout from the end of zero COVID in China. For many, mostly elderly, the sudden switch in policy has proved dangerous. A variant of Omicron has been able to spread almost unchecked through the world's largest population a majority of whom have had no exposure to the virus and limited access to the latest vaccines or medicines. Yao Chang's father is one of millions still unvaccinated. Minutes leaked from a government meeting indicate up to 10 million people were being infected every day in the weeks after zero COVID was dropped. On Monday, the authorities decided to stop giving daily figures and the official death toll for December was less than 50. But videos shared online showing hundreds queuing up at funeral homes like this one in Guangzhou and bodies piled up at a facility in Shanghai tell a different story. We filmed at one busy crematorium in the city where workers dressed in hazmat suits dealt with not a coffin, but a body bag, another victim of COVID. Every family we spoke to had lost someone to the virus. One man questioned what other kind of death there was right now. At another site, a woman almost collapsed with grief as she left the service for her husband. His funeral was one of more than 100 being held that day. It took unprecedented public protests and dire economic forecasts to force an embarrassing U-turn on zero COVID. Right up to almost the day it was scrapped, the Communist Party insisted it was the best policy to deal with the pandemic. For three years, people followed the rules of mass testing and lockdowns, only for the government to drop its restrictions without proper warning or preparation. Instead of queuing for tests, they were suddenly lining up for a ration of ibuprofen. Others bartered with neighbours or begged online for anything to help with fever and flu symptoms. Many of those now in mourning and praying by hospital bedsides feel deceived. The authorities state it has been a timely and orderly transition. That official narrative is helped by the fact the reopening comes just in time for Chinese New Year. Railway stations are back to almost pre-pandemic levels and markets are bustling with customers. China's chief COVID expert says the country is over the worst. We, uh, this time, 
So far, most attention has been on how the major cities like Beijing and Shanghai would withstand the pressure. But the concern is now turning to how rural areas with less resources will cope under their expected strain. The government has had years to prepare for its pandemic exit, but its devotion to zero COVID and the way it was abandoned so abruptly and absolutely has left the country exposed to the ravages of the virus. And what we've seen here in Shanghai gives a worrying insight into what smaller towns and villages could be facing as millions enjoy the freedom to travel for next week's Chinese New Year holiday. When we are witnessing scenes reminiscent of 2020, you question the time and money spent on a policy that only delayed China's day of reckoning with the pandemic. Debbie Edward, ITV News, Shanghai.